I was just on the internet as I do on Reddit, just clicking around, and I don't even know how I came across this anymore. But it just it was just something I clicked, right click, open new tab, and then I saw the trailer for this, and it made me deeply, deeply fucking uncomfortable. And then I that's how I found out that this you know the filmmaker behind it, Kyle Edward Ball, has is a YouTuber. He has a a channel called Bite Size Nightmares, which is interesting because it's basically him developing all the skills and techniques he would use to make this film and i guess the the progenitor to it heck you know which you can see on his youtube channel but what was your your reaction in your nyquil induced delirium as you existed in this hellscape nightmare of these two children trapped in a house with no doors no windows no adults and a creepy something in there with them. Yeah, this was its a very, very interesting experiment is kind of what I would call it. Um, I don't know if this is like, this probably isn't the next big, you know, horror subgenre like found footage or something like that, but I don't think there's quite enough here for that to happen. Like, yeah. this is... This is something you could only probably watch a couple movies of, and then it would kind of get tiring. But um, if people don't know, the sort of style of this is he films like things like off center, like not the subjects are never actually like on the screen, really. It's always they're either off screen or there's just like their legs or like their heads or something. And the dialogue is all like muffled and off screen also mm -hmm. and there's subtitles that come up and it's um supposed to give the effect of essentially being a uh, child um you know walking around your house in the middle of the night your parents are asleep and or your parents aren't home and it's supposed to give you that kind of feeling and it boy it really works because yeah it's it's very creepy. I mean, one of like my favorite things about this movie was just, you know, like watch the way that he plays with light and mm -hmm. like the, um, the, uh, I think he puts a filter on the film so that you, yep, God. um, he puts a filter on the film so that things look a lot more grainy than I think they were shot as. And there, there are points in this movie where you're looking into the darkness and you're like, do I see something? Is there something in the darkness there? Mm -hmm. And you're just, you're, you're focused on this point in the darkness. And sometimes you are looking at something and sometimes there's nothing there. Yeah. And yeah, it was very, very off putting, you know, very, very effective, I thought. And, and that's the, the, the horrifying thing about it, you know, cause this, those long shots of like nothing where you're, you are forced to try and fill in the blanks. You know, not only of like what the narrative is and like what the children themselves are experiencing and whatnot, because it, it it might not like it's sometimes it's only obvious what's going on because of what is in the the subtitles or like the the like captions track, at least on the the version of it that I saw, because it, ah, but the the it, pure nightmare fuel. I watched it in the middle of the night, and I should not have done that because it. Yeah, the, I have a, like a, a house palm tree in my room, and in the darkness, you know, like with my com you know, my computer is next to it, so the exhaust fan causes the leaves to just kind of like blow and like move slightly, and I I scared myself, you know, like after watching this movie, and I haven't done something like that since I was a child, but yeah, it it is a kind of a grating thing though, because you you just want to turn it off, and like get away from it because it's so unsettling because you can just tell that's there's something not good is happening and you don't know what and he's never going to explain to you what the what is you know it's a lot of fan theories have you know started popping up you know some subtextual analysis about um, like child abuse and like and what the opening minutes of the film you know, kind of gives you because that's like the only like moment that the the, the adult is even present and it, it basically insinuates that the son fell down the stairs and cracked his head. And now we are experiencing the horror of him being trapped inside his own mind in a coma. And that's why his parents are gone. That's why they can't get, but I don't know. 
that's maybe a little reaching, but I guess it makes sense. But I would rather just not even try and figure out, you know, beyond that, beyond what we see. It, it just is what it is. And that is enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's um, very, very, I mean, basically this, this is a very, very slow burn film. And so I would recommend anybody who's going to watch it to just kind of go in know, knowing that because yeah. um, it, I mean, the, the detractors of the movie have called it sort of boring, but I think you really need to be in the right headspace yeah. and you, you really need to, you know, devote your time and your attention to it. Um, it's not something that you can watch in like the middle of the day on like a, you know, your phone screen or something like no. that. No, uh, and that's half the trouble because we, I guess we should mention it's hard to see this thing legitimately. Yes. Yeah, he doesn't yet have a distributor. Um, uh, uh, Ball has been pretty uh, present on the on Reddit. Because that's been driving a lot of you know you know eyeballs his way, and he knows that the only way people can see this thing is from you know pirated versions of the Fantasia Fest, you know you know screening that he did essentially. Because like I'll admit it, that's how I saw it, you know. But that's how everyone is seeing this thing. Um, he he wants to get a distributor. He doesn't know if it's going to happen, you know, and, and that's an unfortunate. But he's. He's also you know, appreciated everyone's interest. He's gained a lot of new subscribers on Bite Size Nightmares, but Skinnamarink has his full attention, and you know, and that is you more so you know you're gonna be his priority for a while before he starts uploading again. But where do you see this guy going? Does is there more that he could get in his career? Like, what else do you think we could see him do that would still be this experimental and creative, but maybe more accessible? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he I mean, he definitely has a talent, that's for sure. Um he is one of those guys I could probably see making something in like another subgenre. You know, I don't think he basically I don't think that he needs to stay within the confines of this sort of subgenre he started uh to to remain good. Like I think yeah. his ideas in and of themselves are interesting because you know, just this idea of like a kid, um, you know, you had said earlier, sort of delving deeper into his like subconscious as he like slowly fades fr- from life in a coma. You know, it's it's pretty interesting and um, pretty, really depressing. But um, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I could see this it's really fucked yeah, up. Super, super. Yeah, and that's I a, could see yeah. him going somewhere. But I appreciate a filmmaker who. You know, like where like the virtues of his film are drawn out by just asking the audience to do a little bit of work themselves. And what's great about this is that the work he's asking of you isn't active. It's like you just need to have your subconscious get into the same headspace and then just get you know taken in by it. Yeah, it yeah, an interesting guy. And the whole back rooms genre, it's like there's other people playing in it besides him, but he's the only guy who's gotten a feature put out so maybe we'll see more like this from other people too what do you um what did you make of just out of curiosity the ending of skin and marink like what is your interpretation of of what's going on there you know at its most basic it's just these two children being preyed on psychologically by a monster maybe like that's the the easiest interpretation and then eventually he kills them, you know, or like gets out of them the suffering that he wants or it wants. But, you know, maybe, you know, the other level of it is they finally like it, whether whichever of the children's perspective we're actually inhabiting, eventually they do die. And that's when the movie ends. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was. I mean, I think the sort of the very, very ending, the the interpretation I got from it was that he the monster, whatever it is, is essentially like rewinding time to kill them over and over, over and again. again. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, now, now I see what you're talking about. And that, mm. that fucking rings true. Oh my God. Yeah. That's so fucked up. But mm. I, I'm all, I'm all, I'm here for that though. Like, uh, I want to be taken to a dark corner that I you know, don't want to consider sometimes, you know, it, mm. just maybe not at three in the morning. That was maybe a mistake on my part. <laughs> Yeah, and go watch. I mean, if you want, if you're interested in this right now, go watch Heck because Heck is 
it's up on YouTube right now. It's only like 28 minutes long and yeah, go watch it. And it's basically a proto skinnamarink, you know, the mm -hmm. same kind of idea, but you know, a little more, you know, isolated, doesn't quite stretch, you know, itself as far, you know, and maybe a little more easier to swallow. What was surprisingly easy for me to swallow, I must say, was the surprise horror hit of 2022, Smile. Uh, I missed this when it was in theaters, but I remember seeing the trailer and being really turned off by it. I remember seeing the the creepy viral ad marketing campaign they did where they just sent people to like baseball games and had them sit behind home plate and just creepy smile, you know, uncomfortably. And when... This popped up on Peacock. I knew I had to watch it. And I must say, not disappointed. You know, it. what, what, what did you, what was your spit take? Yeah, it was decent. Um, I'm not really sure why this movie was so popular. Like it, it's, it's, it's a decent movie. It's, you know, not as, um, not as awful as I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it, it has a pretty pretty good story, but yeah, I'm, I'm I guess I'm still not quite sure how it got so popular yeah. because this is like the horror hit of the year, and um, I don't know if that just had to do with because it was right around Halloween, but um, yeah, maybe the 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 great viral marketing campaign like you mentioned, um, or you know this did have and it it has the uh, short film it was based on. I think it's called like. Oh god, what is it? It's like Jenny can't sleep or something like that. Ruth can't sleep. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. And that's up on YouTube, so I'm I'm sure that that might have had to do with it also. And, um, but yeah, it was it was decent. I don't I don't know if I have all that much to to say. Yeah. There, there was a little few too many jump scares. I don't know. I just can't. I have oh. such a low tolerance for that stuff. But. And because that's the thing, I I didn't like I I I didn't have. A, like a negative reaction to the jump scares for the most part because it worked its way up to it but basically this the smile is just a ripoff of the ring and it follows and it just kind of smushes them together to, you know to, to a degree but it, instead of like really feeling pointless and derivative i just kind of enjoyed how twisted and like how properly it subverted my expectations even though it did exactly what the ring did and i, I yeah. yeah and i guess like and i guess it follows didn't do that quite but i still just enjoyed how th this movie just kept on giving you false hope and then just stabbing the knife deeper you know as far as if you were hoping for a happy ending spoilers it might not you know quite you know give you that it's but it's, it's not incoherent it just kind of goes on and on and on I did like how there was a moment where she was considering just fucking murdering somebody <laughs> to try and get out of it. Like she, she at least like dreamed about it. And uh, yeah, that's what I mean. It, 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 it built off of more, like, I guess rec you know, recognized and heralded movies within the horror genre that I, that, you know, they, that, that plowed the field first and it still got, it got return off of the field you know, in, when most other movies who did this probably wouldn't have. I appreciate that the Smile Monster doesn't get a dumb name and, like, a cult book for someone to flip through. We don't know what the fuck this thing is. We don't know what it wants. It's just doing its thing. And mm -hmm. I, I, what did you think of the ending? When it, like, the, the, like the final reveal of, yeah. of all that shit. Like, I was uh, laughing yeah. out loud. I, I thought it was <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> yeah, no, it was... You know, surprisingly ballsy of an ending for, for like a, a studio horror film. You know, very very dark, very grim, and um, yeah, I, I thought it was a great ending because I I honestly was totally expecting some sort of you know eleventh hour you know like oh it was all a dream or like oh she was all just imagining it, mm -hmm. but nope, it's she's actually just lit herself on fire and yeah she's just um, she's fucked there's there yeah she, mm -hmm. there's no saving she did there's no saving her there's nothing but despair and if we ever get a sequel it'll just be more of the same thing there, there's no there's no beating this thing and i guess i i admired their the willingness to just not give anyone an escape 
and yeah, it was yeah it was a, a pretty ballsy ending. yeah and this is on i don't know if you mentioned this but it's on paramount plus now so oh i thought it was oh it's there too okay i forget where yeah, i saw paramount. it i thought i saw it on peacock maybe i'm crazy either way it's one of the two i have them both and i'm getting more mileage out of them than i am some of the other platforms but we'll save that discussion for another time